would you guys today ever take a look at Zyke's USB 4 NVMe SSD enclosure? Now, one of these is going to be ideal for backing up all your data or even, you know, using it for your ISOs and things like that, like Ventoy. Now, it has a maximum read speed of 3.8 GBS when plugged into a USB 4 port. It also supports 3.1 GPS write speeds. It also supports PCI Express Gen 4 times 4 It's a tourless installation, USB 4 Type-C support. It's also backward compatible. Comes with a Starway USB 4 cable and it supports M.2 SSD sizes of 2280, 2260 and 2240. So inside the box, you're going to get yourself your user manual. You're going to get a spare cable. There is a short cable that's stowed away in the device itself, but this is a braided Type-C to Type-C type cable and this will plug into your USB 4 port. You've got a user manual right here, which is going to tell you basically how to open it up, set it up and install your drives. We've got a case on the outside of here, which is plastic, and we can remove that, which will gain access to the actual tallest design inside. So this is it right here. Let me just push this out so we can gain access to the actual drive and then populate it. So it's a bit of a tight squeeze here. Let me just pull this off. There's your stowaway cable. It's made of plastic, this one right here. And again, you don't have to have this on there if you don't want to. You can just leave it as is if you're not too worried about it. I think it's a sort of shockproof uh, type of plastic in case you dropped it. Uh, there is the logo right there. Stowaway cable right there, which goes down the side of the actual unit itself. So nicely to have a short cable just in case you don't want to take a cable you. It will fit easily in your pocket or into a, a backpack or something like that. The whole unit is made of aluminium and plastic. There is the plastic cover there for the housing inside, but the overall outside of it is all made of aluminium or aluminium if you're living in the United States. So there is our USB Type-C port that we're going to plug the cable into. So let's remove this and have a look. So from here, it says uh, open by lifting up the front. So what you need to do here is pull this up. Now, it's a bit stiff when I first got this. So I'm just going to take it a bit more careful and pull it up like so. And this should lever the front off. All we need to do now is slide it forward. And this should free it up from the actual unit itself. So let's pull forward and it should free up. Now you can see there is a big chunk of aluminium right here with a thermal pad with a cover on it. So make sure you remove that little plastic cover because that's what's going to be sitting on top of your NVMe drive, which is going to keep it nice and cool. Let's do that right now because I'm going to be populating this with a uh, NVMe drive here. So inside the actual unit itself, you can see there is a little rubber grommet which holds the drive in place. It's a tallest design. And we have our M.2 slot there. Now you can see the three little holes there, as well as the one that it's populated in. That's for different size drives. If you wanted to populate those, you just pull this rubber little catch out and push it into one of these areas here if you have a smaller uh, M.2 uh, drive. So what we're going to do here is I'm just going to go ahead and get myself a standard M.2 2280 right here and plug this in. This is a Western Digital Black. So let me just go ahead and populate this right here. And I can see that little catch just needs to come round a little bit. So let me just rotate that around like so. Now we should be able to insert the drive. So let's go ahead and do that right there. And we can push it flat down and just rotate round so it locks it into position. So all we need to do now is put the top back on. And you can see there's a little well there at the bottom with this little bit here. So we need to push forward and that will just push into that little well at the back. So let's go sliding this forward like so. So I'm going to push this into the catch right there. And you can see those little tiny balls on the end there. Just push that down and it should snap into position like so. And there we go. We're all ready to go. So now we can power this on with our uh, small cable that we have in the enclosure itself. So what we're going to do here is just put this into the end. Now I'm going to be using a mini PC to power this because that mini PC does have a USB 4.0 port on the front of it. So I just want to use that to get the full speed so I can show you. So here is the plastic case. I'm not going to be using this in this video. So we're going to leave this off and we'll just use what we have right here. 
Now to get the full speeds out of this external enclosure, what you're gonna to need to do is make sure you have a device with a USB 4.0 port on it. If you do, then you will get the full speed that is on this device. So let's go ahead and I'll get this set up. This is the Ustar, which I did a review on the other day. If you wanna take a look at that video, check my playlist out and you should see a video for it. So what we're gonna do is use the port on the front and I'm gonna give this a quick speed test. So let's go ahead and do that right here. And you can see the drive right there. And all I'm gonna do here is open up the crystal disc mark here and run a test. We can see the read speed already is 3,803. If you're wondering what the temperatures are, you can see the max temperature so far is 30.1 30, uh, or 30 degrees. And that is why we're running the test, the benchmark on it, just to see what sort of temps we get. Now, this is great because some of these enclosures I've used in the past get really, really hot. And this one seems to be keeping nice and cool. The read speeds are 3,803.68 and the write speeds are 3,634.61. And the maximum temperature it got to was 33.8 there, as you can see. That's the maximum temperature we got when it finished its benchmark here. So let's do a quick transfer of data from and to the actual device. So you can see we've got some movies here, 22 gigabytes worth. I'm gonna copy these from the drive to my computer, which is a mini PC, and it will copy them back. And you should get a rough idea how long it takes to transfer 20 gigs of data. And you can see there, the speed of it is pretty rapid, as you would expect. Now, of course, this is going onto a NVMe drive as well, and we're gonna be going straight back onto the enclosure, and you'll see what it's like to read and write with 20 gigs of data. So let me copy this back onto the drive itself, and you can see we're now right into the drive itself. Pretty impressive speeds for this enclosure. Temperatures were perfectly fine. They had no issues with temperatures, and that's a really good thing, because when you're moving data like this, you do actually have a lot of temperature issues with some of the cheaper models. So that is the speeds for the read and writes for the data that we transferred to and from the enclosure. So that is the Zyke uh, SSD enclosure there. Pretty pr impressive little bit of kit. And I'll leave a link for that in the video description. Just for full transparency, Zyke did send me this out for review. All opinions are my own. No one is reviewing this video before it's released and no money has changed hands for this review. The price of this device is £82, which is pretty expensive, but what you're getting for your money is a pretty decent all-round enclosure for your SSD for super fast speeds. You'll be able to back up all your games, you'll be able to back up all your data, use it for extra storage, or even install Ventor in it with all your ISOs. But anyway, pretty impressive better kit. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below and what type of external enclosure you use on your PC and what you use it for. It might be helpful to others. Anyway, with that said, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who have joined my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support. I shall catch you in the next video or I'll see you on the Discord server. Bye for now.